Want to learn about DCIS, a precancerous condition of the breast? We will teach you all about it. DCIS, ductal carcinoma in situ, is considered a type of breast cancer, a stage zero breast cancer versus one, two, three, or four. But what does all this mean? The way to think about it is that DCIS is more of a precancerous condition of the breast, an area of abnormal breast cells that are changing and evolving towards becoming more and more abnormal towards becoming an invasive breast cancer if left of untreated. It accounts for about 20% of all breast cancers, and you can learn about invasive breast cancer, the other 80%, at our video lesson on invasive breast cancer at the Breast Cancer School for Patients. The threat to your life is small from DCIS if well treated. Unfortunately, the treatment for DCIS is very similar to invasive breast cancer. It involves surgery, possibly radiation therapy, possibly hormonal therapy. So there's a lot of confusion about the threat of DCIS and the treatment when compared to invasive breast cancer. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you exactly what DCIS is and how it's different from invasive breast cancer. I'm going to go over your surgical options for treating DCIS. And I'm also going to go over the role that radiation therapy plays and hormonal therapy plays for DCIS. I'm going to teach you the link between DCIS and the BRCA mutation, the breast cancer gene, and how you may qualify for genetic testing if you have DCIS. It can change your surgical plans. And I'm also going to share with you what situations you might be able to avoid radiation if you have DCIS. So let's get started. So what is DCIS, ductal carcinoma in situ? Well remember, precancerous breast cells. Not normal cells, cells that are changing and not in a good way, but have not yet become invasive breast cancer where they have the ability to leave the tumor, go to other parts of the body, your brain, your bone, your liver, grow there and threaten your life. That's invasive breast cancer. DCIS in situ means the cells just don't have that ability yet. And the way to think about it, it's more of a precancerous condition. Another way to think about it is that when you have DCIS and you're found to have that, that you're actually catching something early. You're catching it early enough before it's a threat to you and removing it so you lessen your chance of developing a breast cancer, a threatening breast cancer, an invasive breast cancer in the future. So in some ways it's a good thing, but on the other hand, we have to treat it. So let me give you a couple of facts about DCIS. If left untreated or poorly treated, then there's a pretty high chance of that area in the breast, the abnormal cells of DCS, evolving to become an invasive breast cancer. Mammograms typically, not always, pick up DCIS as calcifications on a screening mammogram. So we see little white dots on a mammogram that are abnormal white dots. We biopsy them look at it on the microscope, find DCIS, work it up, and then treat it. So it's one of the benefits of getting mammograms is that we can identify this area, these precancerous areas, before we can feel a lump or a bump in the breast. DCIS, whether you've had it years ago or you just were diagnosed with DCIS, for reasons we can't really explain in parts, a slightly increased risk of developing another breast cancer in the future, a completely new one versus the normal population. So if you're 50 and your lifetime risk of developing breast cancer and you've never had a breast cancer is at that age, let's call it six or seven percent. If you've had DCIS and you're 50, then your lifetime risk of getting another breast after having the DCIS taken out and keeping your breast is probably 10%. So it does rate, it is a risk factor for future cancers. So, the way to think about it, if you have DCIS and only DCIS, you're going to do fine, but we have to treat it, and that's what I'm gonna cover next. So what are your surgical options with DCIS? Well, the primary treatment for DCIS is breast cancer surgery, 
and the vast majority of patients are so well treated with a lumpectomy, a breast conserving surgery, but usually followed by radiation therapy to that breast. It's not always needed, but most of the time it is. Some women, a minority of women, choose or will require a mastectomy, removal of the whole breast, with or without breast reconstruction for their DCIS. So let me kind of give you the idea behind a lumpectomy. A lumpectomy surgery, and you can take our course, our video course on lumpectomy versus mastectomy at the Breast Cancer School for patients to learn more detail. But in general, if an area of the breast has DCIS and it's small enough, then we can remove that area of DCIS with a surgery with a good margin of normal breast tissue around it, kind of implying we got it all, and close things up, keep the breast, and not do a mastectomy. But there's always a tiny chance that there might be a few cancer cells or DCIS cells left behind, even though we tell you we got around it well, that might grow in the future as a local recurrence, cancer growing back in that area. So radiation dramatically reduces the chance of something growing back in that breast by killing some of those cancer cells that may or may not be there and we just don't know until something comes back. So a lumpectomy, generally followed by radiation therapy, is just as effective as a mastectomy for curing breast cancer in general, early stage breast cancer, invasive breast cancer, and also for DCIS. There are some situations, which I'll cover shortly, that you can avoid radiation for DCIS and keep your breast. A mastectomy, removal of the breast. There are some situations where it's required. That is when, in general, and these are complicated decisions that you and your breast surgeon will make together. But if you have multiple areas of DCIS in the breast, an area of DCIS on one side, another area of DCIS on the other side, or a large area of DCIS that's too large to remove with a lumpectomy, you may require a mastectomy. And that can be removing the breast and adding reconstruction to rebuild the breast generally a series of surgeries, or you can have a mastectomy and not rebuild the breast, not reconstruct the breast, and things are flat and wear a prosthesis. So a mastectomy in a small number of women is needed. Probably the most mastectomies that are done for DCIs are generally women that have chosen to have mastectomies for their DCIs for their own personal reasons. Next, I'm going to talk a bit about radiation therapy and hormonal therapy for DCIS. What about radiation therapy and hormonal therapy for DCIS? Well, let me cover radiation therapy first. It is an essential component of treating DCIS when you have a lumpectomy. It reduces the risk of something growing back in the breast, the area of the surgery, usually. And when it does, Something that recurs and grows back, half the time it's DCS, but half the time it's an invasive breast cancer. So it's real important to lessen the chance of something growing back in the breast. So if you have a lumpectomy and radiation therapy for a fairly straightforward area of DCIS, the chance of something growing back in that breast over the next five to 10 years, so a lumpectomy, full course of radiation, is about five to 10%. But if you don't have radiation and you have the same surgery, these are really round numbers, the risk is twice that, maybe 10 to 25% chance of something growing back in that breast over the next five to 10 years. So radi radiation cuts in half the chance of something growing back in that breast after a lumpectomy. But remember, you're keeping your breast, you're keeping that part of your body and what that means to you. A mastectomy, on the other hand, seldom is radiation needed after a mastectomy for DCIS. Now let me talk about hormonal therapy. Hormonal therapy is a complex topic when it comes to DCIS. We use it all the time for invasive breast cancer. But hormonal therapy is helpful in some women who have responsive tumors, DCIS cells. So you take the DCIS out and it's gone. I'm telling you, it hadn't gone anywhere. So why take hormonal therapy? Remember I told you that if you had DCIS, your lifetime risk is a little higher? 
Hormonal therapy can lessen that lifetime risk of developing a completely new breast cancer in either breast by bathing your breast in some anti-estrogen medicines. So there's a chemo prevention, not chemotherapy, using drugs, chemo, to prevent chemo prevention effects of hormonal therapy. It can also lessen the chance of something growing back in that area somewhere. Next, I'm going to talk to you about the link between BRCA, the breast cancer gene, and DCIS. How is the breast cancer gene, the BRCA mutation, linked to DCIS? Well, the breast cancer gene, the BRCA mutation, most people that have a breast cancer or DCIS do not have the breast cancer gene. In fact, only a tiny percent, 10% maybe. But if you carry that broken gene that runs through your family, and it's a broken gene in every cell of your body, most don't have it. But if you do, and we find out that you do, and we identify you have red flags and test you for it, you test to be positive for the BRCA mutation, your lifetime risk of developing a new breast cancer after having DCIS is 50 to 60% if you keep your breast. If you're diagnosed with the breast cancer gene and you've never had breast cancer, your lifetime risk of developing breast cancer is 60 to 80 percent. And a 20 to 50 or 60 percent lifetime risk of developing ovarian cancer, which is very deadly and hard to screen. So, getting back to my point, DCIS in and of itself, especially when diagnosed at an early age, before the age of 50, and we add in many other risk factors to determine whether you meet the qualifications for genetic testing. Take our video lesson on BRCA genetic testing at the Breast Cancer School for Patients. But if you meet some of these criteria that I'm telling you about, you may carry the BRCA mutation. And if you do, then we can manage you differently. We can look at your breasts differently. We can screen your breasts differently, adding MRIs to mammograms. Some women that are diagnosed with DCS at the age of 40 do the breast cancer gene testing, come back positive, still keep their breasts. Some women choose or pushed a little bit more to having mastectomies on both sides, not only to treat their DCIS, but to lessen their risk of developing a completely new breast cancer in the future. So it's a complex topic, but I'm advising you if you're just diagnosed with DCIS and you're less than 50 or you've got a strong family history of breast cancer or ovarian cancer, engage your surgeon immediately about possibly having BRCA genetic testing if you qualify. And what are the advantages and disadvantages and have a detailed discussion about that. Next, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how you might be able to avoid radiation therapy if you have a lumpectomy for DCIS. Can I avoid radiation for my DCIS after I have a lumpectomy? Well, the general answer is no in most cases, so let me explain. There are different types of DCIS. Some are very high-grade, a little more angry cells versus low-grade, less angry cells. Some are larger. Some are taken out with a lumpectomy with a great big margin of normal tissue around them. Others are taken out with a smaller, adequate margin, but have DCIS a little closer to the edge. Some women have a small breast. Some women have a large breast. This is a complicated topic, but let me simplify it for you. Most of the time, we recommend radiation to lessen the chance of something growing back in that breast that can threaten your life, and it's needed, and we can back it up with an incredible amount of data. But there are a few situations that it's worth engaging your surgeon and your radiation oncologist about options that you might be able to avoid radiation to your breasts after a lumpectomy rather than having a mastectomy. So, a couple of them. If you have a tiny area of very favorable DCIS, what we call low-grade DCIS, and you've got a very large margin of tissue around it, and you're older, you're 60, 70, 80, 90, there's a rationale that you can watch that area, and the risk of something growing back in that breast is pretty low, and radiation would make a small number a little smaller. And you can choose whether or not you would choose to have radiation or not. And if you don't, then you take a little higher risk of something growing back. But you can make that decision with your radiation oncologist. Another idea, 
if you have an oncoplastic type approach to your breast cancer. So you see a breast surgeon, they do almost a reduction type surgery on your breast. Take out a reasonably favorable DCIS with 20 millimeter margins, not two millimeter margins. Then you can talk to your radiation oncologist and breast surgeon and get an idea how what they would estimate the chance of something growing back if no radiation versus having radiation. Lastly, I want to tell you a little bit about a developing technology called genomic assays to help us and help you determine. Look deeper into your cancer cells to determine whether your cancer cells are a little bit more aggressive and at a higher risk of growing back in the breast. So, if a patient is very interested in avoiding radiation and everything looks pretty favorable, we can run a genomic assay and if it comes back and it really suggests those cells are much less likely to recur in the breast with good data and information that we believe is correct. It can give a piece of information in a larger puzzle to make a decision with your radiation oncologist if you might be able to avoid radiation if you really want to avoid radiation in a setting where otherwise you would have gotten radiation. An Oncotype DCIS test is an example of a genomic assay that is used some to help you make a decision with your radiation oncologist in some settings. If you've been diagnosed with DCIS, be reassured you are going to be okay. In some ways, it seems like what we do to prevent these precancerous cells from developing and evolving into an invasive breast cancer is almost over-treatment. But hang in there, it's still needed. Be well informed, know your options, and find the right treatment for you. Remember, in many ways, this is preventive maintenance. You're finding something that's early and taking care of it before it can threaten your life. To learn more about DCIS, visit the Breast Cancer School for Patients, where we actually teach you everything you need to know. We're here to help you get the best possible breast cancer care in your community. Register on our website to get our list of questions to prepare you for your next doctor visit.